Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we complete a bracket challenge to determine the best type of music to enjoy bourbon with. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Tim Swaya, Jim Fossa, and Kathy Cool. Hey, gang, what's up? Hello. Hello. Oh, so we're going to have a fun show today. We're going to, uh, you know, look at the bourbon and music and see what goes together best. Should be interesting. And uh, we've got a bracket challenge of eight, as as we always do. But before we get to that, I wanted to ask a question. This came up on a show recently. Tim, you had to answer because you were asked the question. But we're going to ask everybody at this time. You are allowed to say someone else if you'd like, because maybe you just want to mix it up. You don't want to say the same person. But what person from the world of bourbon have you not met? But you would like to. But you would like to. What? Uh, yeah, what would be the person? You have to be alive, there? right? Because you, you have, have to be alive. Because there. yeah, yeah, it's not. Living. Yeah, you don't get to go back in time. So this is real world. So it has to be someone who is alive that uh, you have not met that you would love that opportunity and chance to meet them. Mm-hmm. Anybody want to jump in? This I'll go first. Talk. I'll go first. The, the, there's only one person from the world of bourbon I don't think I've actually met. Yeah, I, I think everyone else that I've that of note that I've wanted to meet, I've I've met at least you know, and I'd like to certainly interview. There's some people that I've met and haven't interviewed. Um, you know, Baker Beam comes up. That would be someone that probably topped on my list to interview, but have not done. It. Max Shapiro is another one. I've met him, never interviewed him. Those would be a couple of the ones that I'd really love to interview. But I but I have met him. The one person that I've never met is legendary uh, Stitzel Weller, uh, Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Famer Ed Foot. Uh, Ed's still around. Uh, you know, he's the guy that made all this Pappy Van Winkle that people lost their minds over and the greatest stuff in the world. He's the guy who made that. I'd like to talk to him. I'd like to, you know, spend some time hanging out and talking to him. Uh, we know, uh, I, you know, his son-in-law, uh, we've done an interview with him on the bourbon show, but again, that wasn't me. I sent uh, questions over to him and he asked him the questions. I would love the opportunity and chance to meet Ed foot and talk to him myself, which, uh, Royce Neely has done by the way. And, and Ed foot actually helped him out a lot. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, that'd be the guy I'd want to meet. How about you guys? Did you come up with anybody? I did. Okay. Kathy's got one. Um, I haven't met a whole lot of people. I have met like, you know, Fred No and Jimmy Russell and Al Young when he was around. And, um, but I haven't met Andrew Weebrink. Really? No Weebrink. Okay. And he knows everything about wood and science. And I think that would be really interesting to talk about. He's a fun guy to hang out with, no doubt about it. Uh, incredibly intelligent, maybe one of the smartest people in the world of bourbon. Uh, and it's two different people. When you're hanging out with him, he's just one of the guys. He's one of the normal people you'd hang out with. Uh, you wouldn't think, um, you know, he's this scientist type of guy. And then you see him do a presentation. And by the way, he's not only brilliant because, and there's a lot of, there's brilliant people, but sometimes brilliant people have the hardest time explaining things in a manner that's easy to understand for a person who doesn't do it every day. We brings great at that. He, he puts it in the simplest terms terms where you can understand i we sent his presentation jim what was that four years ago five years i don't know it's been a long yeah. time that's still one of the best presentations best i've ever, ever seen yeah. yeah it changed royce neely's business we talked about royce already uh he was doing a, a char number three because that's what all the big guys do and we bring had yeah, maybe you need to think about toasting this and doing a lower char and that's what neely started doing the very next week and has done it ever since and it's his whiskey is better for it i mean it truly is 
So it's a, that was a big change in, in what Neely does and it really made a huge difference. So yeah, we rank is smart. He's, he's great. He's and great. I see, I see now finally uh, he's doing all the other shows and stuff. He's on bourbon pursuit and all this stuff. So now we bring suddenly a big deal now. I'm sure I won't be able to, uh, <laughs> he won't be returning my calls soon. You know, I had this down calls. for years. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll be moving on to other people now. So, and you were there on the lonely days, just watching Instagram lives together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just when it was the two of us, but now yeah, what are you going to do? All right. Uh, did anybody else come up with someone they wanted to be? Uh, can you it be someone one. that you met virtually, but not in real life? Yeah, I think that's fair because, yeah, there's definitely something different to uh, virtual meeting versus real life. So. so the whole crew from 291 out of Colorado, they are just so much fun, like love and light. Like they just look like a damn blast to hang out with, like Philip, Michael, Hannah, everybody there. I just want to go hang out with all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Emily. That's another one. Yeah, they're yeah. all fantastic. They just would be the best weekend to hang out with all of them. Yeah. Road the, trip the coolest, to Colorado. The, the coolest thing. Yeah, we're going out there in June. So you can piggyback on that if you want. We'll be hanging out with Michael Myers. Uh, the coolest thing is to start taking pictures and Michael grabs your iPhone and then does the settings so they're right to take a real photo. Oh, Good man. Photo. That guy, that guy. That's awesome. You, you take a That's photo awesome. and then tell him to take a photo of the same thing. Wait till you see the difference. It's, uh, oh, it yeah. Works. It's it's amazing to see a professional photographer because they look at things differently. The, the way I see things and the way he sees things, it's different. And he yeah, has the ability I'm to capture gonna that. I'm just going to snap something and like try to make it look better later. He's going to make it right the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Jim, did you come up with one? Yeah, I mean, um, I've met a lot of people, obviously, with what I've done in all the uh, tours, of him, but I have not met Bill Samuels Jr. Oh, there you go. Well, that's, a, that's a big one, yeah. I have a picture uh, of him. One. Uh, so, uh, I've done times, but I've you know done tons of stuff with with uh, you know Jane Bowie and other people from there, but uh, I have not got to spend any time with him. So that'd be a cool one for me. Maybe the most interesting life of anybody in Bourbon currently. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the the stories that guy's got is it's a movie. It's it's like Forrest Gump like movie where it's all they throw all these things that are over the top where he's got you know Colonel Sanders stories combined with Elvis stories and you know all this stuff it's like this guy lived this life you know he's a White House intern and uh, you know he's the one who actually you know patented uh, uh, you know got the the red wax drippings he ran that through the patent office I mean think of what that means to Maker's Mark today I right. mean. Yeah, and he'll sit there and tell you, you know, I didn't really do anything for the company. I just kind of kept it going. And then, you know, my father before me was great. My my mother and then then my son is taken to the next level. No, man, Bill had a huge amount to do with where that company is today and continues to do so. He's a great Bill, Bill made that Red Wax keep their lawyers employed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 The, uh, his law firm definitely likes it. They, they definitely <laughs> All right, Tim. Uh, last but not yeah, least. I, I do have one. I would love... <laughs> As much as I talk about stories, Greg Schneider would be something, but I, I, I would have one on top of that. And I think he's the silent giant in bourbon that nobody talks about is Jerry Dalton. Jerry Dalton. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to be somebody who's, who was distilling with brown rice and doing things well ahead of his time. And now you look at now it, it's just some of the things that he was doing and just head down, did the job. Doesn't want the pop and circumstance. Yeah. And does this thing. I'd love to hear what he has to say. Because that's one of the big takeaways we learned when we had Greg Schneider from Chicken Cock in one of it. Get that guy talking. You'd be surprised. And yeah. I can only imagine what stories Jerry has from his time at Bean. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish we could have uh, a show where he just told fun stories and stuff like that. That would be yeah. so cool. Because he was he was Booker's best friend. You know, he lived next to him. So, I mean, you know, this is a guy who not only worked with Booker, you know, lived next to him and then took over the job from Booker. So crazy, but yeah, he's kind of forgotten. Now most, even though some of the biggest bourbon fans have no idea who he is. And he was the master distiller at Jim Beam for nine years, nine years. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. That's not a small time. No, that, that's not a keep it a seat warm. Right. Exactly. So yeah, there you go. All right. Great job there. And guess what gang? It is now time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with, uh, let's start with Mr. Jim this time. Jim, what do you got? I'm going to go with a bottle picked up last week with Heidi, uh, Samuel Burton. Samuel Burton. Okay. Heidi made sure she got the good pop out yeah. of that. Yeah, <laughs> Heidi got the pop out of that, apparently. No, not, not a lot there, So, but that is our lead right now. What do you got, McNeil? Um, I have a Knob Creek, just regular Knob Creek. Mm. Oh, that's really Here's good. That's going to be tough to beat. I've got a broken barrel here, so let's see what this does. Pretty full, pretty full. Let's see. Huge cork. These are not usually very good. Let's see what we got, though. 
marginal, marginal, not enough to beat McNew, Kathy. I'm going to open up uh, something I've already opened before. It's a bluegrass. Okay. It's 90 proof. Okay. Not enough there. Not enough. Tim, your last but not least. Not by well, uh, I'm, I'm still nursing this single barrel of uh, <laughs> the legend from uh, Neely Family Distillery. Well, we will have probably no cork pop. No, no, okay. nothing there. No. Let's let it's the audience know Tim is traveling, and apparently he travels light, just brings a bottle. So. Yes. Pulled right from the bottle, no glassware. Just we'll, one we'll bottle. Just off. one bottle. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, McNew, you won that, right? Or, Yay! Yeah, McNew Yay! wins. Cheers. Go McNew! Salud. All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, it's bracket challenge time. We're going to determine the best style of music to as you're enjoying your bourbon. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thieves Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. My name is Heidi Topol Eller Fosnott, and you're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we have a bracket challenge to determine the best type of whiskey to drink your bourbon with. And McNew is going to get bullied on the show. Right. That's somewhat like that. I mean, she got it wrong, but uh, you'll audience will figure it out as we get sure. going. Uh, the contenders are as follows: classic rock, bluegrass, blues, country, classic music classic cold music, I should say, and pop music, jazz, and easy listening. So I have a question. Oh, that's your easy listening right there, if that's your question. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. No, like what would, what would Key West music fall under? You know, like boat music, yeah. Jimmy Buffett. We only have eight represented, and that didn't get represented because it's not traditionally. Again, I looked at that stuff, and I do enjoy that when I'm at the beach, but that's typically paired with rum drinks. So it didn't make the cut here. And, you're doing reggae and rum, not reggae and. Yeah, it, it didn't make the cut here. Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's so. been in the Sweet 16, but we're not doing that. Exactly. Exactly. So fair. Yeah, there are more music styles enlisted here, but these are the ones that I think align best out of uh, all the styles with uh, bourbon. And then we'll see what is the best of the best. Our matchups are going to look like this. In my mind, we're weighted heavy at the top here. Wait to hear these matchups. Bluegrass versus the blues. A classic mm. ro rock versus easy listening. Jazz versus country. And finally, classical music versus pop music. So there we go. Round number one, Kathy, you are going to be first. Bluegrass or blues? What goes best with bourbon? Bluegrass. Bluegrass, bluegrass, nice. Bluegrass goes up one nothing. Tim, what do you think? I'm going with bluegrass as well. I don't know how you can strip 
bluegrass music out of bourbon. Yeah, that's largely made in the bluegrass state. Uh, Jim, you're next. Bluegrass or blues? I'll, I'll uh, take it home with bluegrass. Bluegrass, yeah. yeah. Though uh, the blues, no, that's a good bourbon one too. But yeah, it's just a tough matchup. That's a bad for the blues. That was a uh, bad for round one matchup for sure. Next up is uh, classic rock versus easy listening. Round number two, Tim, you're first. Would you enjoy listening classic to classic rock? Rock. All right, There's rock. no doubt. Classic rock. All right. Uh, Jim, you're next. Classic rock or easy listening? I mean, how do you not go with easy? No, I'm classic rock. <laughs> <laughs> classic rock goes up to nothing, McNeil. Yeah, this is absolutely another shout out. Classic rock. Classic rock moves on. We'll be in the final four. All right. Next up is jazz versus country. Round number three. Jim, you're first. Well, uh, well, Bully McNew here. I'm going to go with jazz. I'll do anything but country with my music. With my yeah, uh, yeah. jazz, jazz. All right, jazz goes up one nothing. Round number three, McNew, you're next. There are like a hundred thousand whiskey drinking country songs. It's got to be country. Okay, country has tied up. There are one hundred thousand terrible country songs dedicated to drinking whiskey. They cannot uh, stand a uh, hold uh, you know anything to jazz music. I will go jazz music. I enjoy listening to jazz and uh, drinking a little bourbon with it. Sounds this like a, a very nice evening. Bias. If your music, I would want to stab my eardrums out. So no, <laughs> thank you. I'll pass. Kathy, you're next. Jazz or country? I feel like if you're sipping whiskey and listening to jazz, you're a little too fancy for me. So I'm voting country. All right, that means it's tied up. Tim, you're going to be the tiebreaker here. Country or jazz? Oh my God! Are we talking Kenny Chesney country, or are we talking Willie Nelson country? We can do or are Willie we talking Nelson. all Waylon, country? Waylon country is whiskey no. drinking country. Here in my beer country. No, we're not talking like your boy band country. We're like Willie Waylon, Hank. If boy you band, to yeah. yeah. Oh, this is a general term. God, I can't listen to country. I'll listen to a Coltrane all day long. Give me jazz. I feel like jazz, jazz moves on. on. Martini bullshit in some little dark bar. Like it's jazz not- has knocked off country in the first round. New Goodbye, Orleans country. jazz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there goes my follower contest. Half my followers are going to be gone. That's it. Yeah. Sometimes we make that. It's play. only the bad ones. It's the bad ones. You know what? Do. Country made it to a tiebreaker. Yeah, country made it to a tiebreaker. That's the best thing. The can country say. or western? There's a two yeah. differences. A tough oh, yeah. topic. The Blues Brothers. They like both country and blue, bluegrass. That's right. Made it. Bluegrass is a predecessor to country. So right. that's where uh, that now. That's where I right. maybe hang your hat on that. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it shakes right. out. Round four: classical music versus pop music. For, versus what? Pop. Pop music, yes. Um. Little Britney Spears, maybe. No, I don't want to drink whiskey when I hear pop. I want to like drive my car off the road. So I'm going to go classical here. <laughs> classical. Yeah, I think classical uh, kind of, you know, li- elevates it a little bit. So I-, I like classical music. And man, you can come up with some really good stuff. You can get a great classical playlist. That'd yeah. be awesome for, for that. Pop music, eh, not so much for, for drinking bourbon. So I'm going classical music. Kathy, what do you think? Classical or pop? Oh, um. Yes, classical. I classical. I love symphonies. Okay. I used to play the clarinet. You can drink your whiskey to the sounds of me playing the clarinet. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. You have a clarinet there. I'd like to hear that. I don't. Do you have any hot cross <laughs> buns? Can you remember that one? Remember, was my senior year of high school. I knew more than. We played the Star Wars theme. We played a lot of movie themes. That's a big clarinet song. If you remember, I'm very good at those. I was uh, in Star band, Wars. and yeah. I had a clarinet, but I did not know how to play it. I would just move my fingers and pretend like I knew what I was doing. Mm. And then Typical I McDo, like, mailing it in. It's so I was like, yeah, it's oh, so okay, my, my read is broken, <laughs> and I'd always have an excuse not to do one because I had no, I had no. God forbid, McNew does anything. Yeah, I yeah. just, I was just like, I, I like a drummer. Yeah. I like a guy that plays drums in the band. So I signed up for band, and I fucking had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Okay. Jeez, it's like following the girl to college. Yeah. It's bad. So our final four looks like this. Uh, tough matchups here. They're kind of paired nicely mm-hmm. together. Bluegrass versus classic rock. Jazz oh. versus classical music. Round number five. I'm going to kick this thing off. 
uh bluegrass or classic rock boy this is tough to me this is this is the championship here in my mind uh even starting it out uh, this is this is the two that that go best and both uh, obviously play very well in bourbon events and things like that you see events there's a lot of times there's bluegrass people you know playing and but there are plenty of rock stars that uh you know keith richards has got a bottle of uh you know rebel bourbon up there he's drinking it's it's a it's a genre that is definitely bourbon focused Whew. I, because i like it better i like both styles actually but i like classic rock better i'm gonna go classic rock kathy you're next I agree with you. I think that there are a lot of songs in both genres that would yep. be fun to drink bourbon to. Um, I can picture, you know, people like Tim pulling straight from their bottle at classic rock concerts, but I'm going to go bluegrass. Bluegrass. Bluegrass has tied it up. Tim, what do you think? Bluegrass or classic rock? So we're going to have to really dig into this. So classic rock, are we defining classic rock now as big hair 80s bands now and prior? No. Or are we talking Led okay. Zeppelin? Uh, uh, and prior is, is key there. So yeah, probably big bands, uh, big hair bands and prior. Yes. Uh, to me, the, the okay. still the staple of classic rock is Led Zeppelin, the Who, the Rolling Stones, you know, the Doors, you know, that, yep. that era. Yeah. Yeah, because when I started hearing somebody tell me Motley Crue's classic rock, I well, it does keep getting redefined. It keeps getting redefined, but yes, yes. Yeah. All right, so yeah, no. And with that being, st- <clears throat> I got to go bluegrass because if I'm going to be drinking bourbon, I got to go back to I got to go back to bluegrass and and give country a little bit of a hit here because it's worth it. I'll make it make the hard choice on somebody else. Bluegrass is up two to one over classic rock. Jim, you're next. Well, I'm going to agree with Steve on this one. Uh, you know, for me, if I'm if I'm drinking whiskey, I'm I'm definitely listening to classic rock. Um, you know, to me, that genre is perfect. You think of those guys up on the stage, bottle in their hand, drinking as they're playing. Yeah. You know, I can't tell you the concerts I went to in the, uh, you know, '80s that you'd, you'd see those guys up there just drinking the whole freaking time they're playing. And they'd have Eddie Van bottle, Halen. I mean, yeah, I, right I don't there. know if it worked out well for those guys, but yes, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. they were they were definitely a drink on stage um yeah and you wonder were they faking it was that just iced tea in those bottles you'd see <laughs> probably think. probably right no, and i don't, I don't think the whole it was freaking stadium here in st louis that it was uh you know <laughs> yeah and i don't think it was flour they were snorting in the back <laughs> area. i thought it was baking powder no <laughs> so here's where we're at mcnew uh it goes to you bluegrass or classic rock what do you think oh so i really don't like this one um because when I think bluegrass, I think, like I said, it's a predecessor to country. Um, I think it goes better with moonshine. Like you would have a bluegrass band at a moonshine festival, but maybe not a bourbon mm-hmm. festival. Right? So sure. I'm actually going to go classic rock with this one. Because that's like, those are like some bangers those are some whiskey drinking songs so i'm gonna go classic rock here classic rock that means classic rock moves on i thought for sure mcnew is going to knock classic rock out just out of spite so i'm pretty no, happy I'm, I'm not, I actually like classic <laughs> rock. She's, she's playing the game legitimately so how about that all right she's jazz finals yeah jazz versus classical what do you think out of those two classical music or jazz round at number six up first is kathy so I know I didn't vote for either of these in the first round, but it's not because I don't like them. Wait, I think I did vote for classical. You did vote for anyway. classical. Um, <clears throat> yes, because the clarinet playing. I I enjoy jazz. I really do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it through to fight against classic rock. All right, jazz goes up one nothing. Tim, what do you think? Jazz or classical music? listening to some Wagner, like uh, ride the Valkyries and getting hammered right. and singing, kill the wabbits with that in the background really sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but I don't think it goes with the bourbon drink. And I think you got to go with jazz and keep it to the roots of new Orleans and the whole shebang that comes down with that. I think jazz moves, moves on. Jazz goes up to nothing. Jim, what do you think? Jazz or classical music? I think Kenny G takes it home for me. We'll go some jazz and, <laughs> Wait, he's easy listening. I know. <laughs> he's easy listening. It's a crossover. Yeah. All right. So our, our finals looks like this classic rock versus jazz. Round number seven. Tim, you're going to be first. Classic rock or jazz? What is the official music of bourbon? I'm going for redemption. Classic rock. 
All the Classic way. Rock goes up one nothing. Jim. Classic Not Rock even or a question. Not even a question. Thank thank God McNew didn't knock it out. Classic there Rock. You go. Classic All Rock. Way. McNew. Like, Classic I, Rock I, or Jazz. I kind of want to vote wrong so Steve gets an email about his jackassery. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, um, remember when I got that email saying like, jackassery and like a fuckery and all that rock, stuff? Because it's the right answer. Yeah, there you go. Classic Rock wins. Yeah, that guy was mad. <laughs> you would be mad about this too. He was so angry. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, yes. What is jazz. that? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I guess I'll listen to this. And yeah, we may get more uh, based on that now. So <laughs> it happens. Any all right, we'll wrap this one up. Congratulations to all those classic rock artists. Uh, you are the winner. And uh, have a little cheers on us for sure. So we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Kathy, we're starting with you. Where can people find you? You can find me drinking bourbon and listening to Kenny G. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or on Facebook at Kathy Cool. Tim. You can find me uh, drinking bourbon and listening to Classic Rock Motley Crew all day long uh, or at the uh, Tasting Events page at abvnetwork.com or on Instagram at swyguy2112. Yes. Did you watch Pamela and Tommy on uh, on Hulu? I it, have. It was over. I'm so sad. Yeah, that was great. Great. R- really great. A plus. Yeah, she guy. was spectacular. She, she was really just, just her, the talent in there was really good. And I'm not talking about I think the that visual guy, stuff. That guy reminded yeah. me of Tommy. I mean, he. he yes. They he casted had, it very well. He he looked like him. He acted like him. He had his his amount of energy that he always had. And that that was that was. How do you get how do you get mad at me because I was on Pornhub researching the source? Uh, sure, sure. Research. It was for research. I know. <laughs> what tape are they talking about? I have to look this up. <laughs> <laughs> this tape of which they speak. Yes, I need so. to know more. <laughs> now, Jim, where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook at Jim Fazat or on Instagram at Foz Jim, F-A-Z-Z-J-I-M. All right, McNew. So you can actually find me in the Bourbon Zeppelin on the 15th of every month, giving you legit country music to listen oh. to your bourbon. It's a good article. And you can find me on Instagram at McNew ABV. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. Also got a company website, abvnetwork.com, where everything that we do is out there. Past uh, issues of Bourbon Zeppelin, maybe you want to read Honky Tonk Happy Hour, as McNew calls it. It is in there, so check us out at abvnetwork.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. We are the Bourbon Daily. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. See you, folks. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.